you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire bible Center teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreach throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. All of a sudden, everybody broke through. And then they were there, and they, hey, 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 you know. And so I ran to Jesus. I said, Lord, Lord, there they are. They're here. Can, uh, can, can you tell the ship to stop so we can get, the, get them on the boat? And he just, he looked at me with tears in his eyes and said, it's too late. It's too late. I said, but Lord, they're right there. It won't take very long. He said, it's too late. It's too late. And the Lord said, the, those are the ones who are not ready. They didn't prepare themselves. <clears throat> and so all we could do, and then they were smiling, and then after a while, you could see the smiles slowly start just leaving their face because they realized they were getting left behind. And so, it was, the sand was kind of golden, but it didn't, wasn't necessarily, I didn't know how they were gonna get any food, and how they were gonna survive. But we didn't have any a choice at that point. And so the Lord just, just started showing me how it kind of coincided with this scripture here in, in Matthew 25, where the foolish ones got left behind and the wise ones made it. <clears throat> and the Lord it was, it was like, it was so hard on him that so many of our, his, his children were missing, but they had made the choice. And he had, we had warned them through the years and through the time period. There's another scripture that's very similar to this. And it comes out to, to the same thing. They just were not ready and they didn't take care when they should have. They kind of took things for granted and they made a lot of decisions that God didn't tell them to make. There was one other time where I was um, sitting on Well, I'm not going to tell you that one now. But there was one thing that the Lord kept bringing to my heart. And he wanted me to understand that there are people who are called and who are in their in their calling, but they're not walking with it. It's like they're living kind of half flesh and half, half spirit. We are spirit beings. 
the real us is going to live forever. The question is not, like I was watching this thing on, on the news where this Asian guy, he, he at the school, I think it was, uh, it was here in California. And he, he, he killed a couple of people and shot about three or four others. <clears throat> and then I think he uh, killed himself. And I was thinking, God, that's, that's so horrible. He thinks he killed himself and escaped the, the pain. Actually, all he did was push himself into the pain forever. Because that, that's not something that's going, taking place uh, as an earthly consequence. It's a spiritual consequence. And when you get there, you're there. And I can imagine the shock on his face when he got there. Where is this? What is this place? It's like, what am I doing here anyway? I, I, I'm supposed to be dead. I, Shut up, fool. You are dead, but you're not non-existent. You're not alive with the, with the life of the Lord. You got yourself caught up in your own desires. And the Lord wanted you to know that he has more for you and he doesn't want you to end up in the wrong place. <clears throat> and he told me to think of the worst possible place on earth that you can think of. And then imagine there's an area even worse than that. And so he said, hell, the best place in hell is worse than the worst. The best place in hell is worse than the worst place on earth that you can see or even think of that you can even imagine. And we can think of some pretty awful things, I'm sure. This place that you're thinking, that you're dreaming about, or that you're visualizing, it, hell is going to be worse than that. The very best place in hell is going to be worse than that. So that's why God is so strong and doesn't want us to go there. He wants us to really realize the seriousness of what you're dealing with. And there's so many Christians who are not taking things serious. And the rapture it says here that it's going to come like a thief in the night. That means it's going to come where we're not prepared. <clears throat> a thief in the night is like a thief that sneaks up in the dark and you're not aware of him being there. Well, that's the way God is going to or rather Jesus is going to come and he's going to come and it's going to be very quietly unprepared. And if you're not ready, you could end, you could end up being left behind. He doesn't want you to walk in fear. He doesn't want you to walk in, uh, you know, any kind of trepidation, trepidation about it. He just wants you to know the seriousness of what your life is about. 
And he said, <clears throat> and he told me this. He said, nobody can go to another place that I haven't put, that I haven't taken them. Now they can do it under their own power. But if I didn't take them or lead them or direct them, then they're AWOL. That's absence without leave in a military sense. So he has a, a plan for everybody and he has an answer for everything that you look at and seem to be concerned about. Now you see the girl back there in, with the black shirt, in, her name is Linda. She, she was one of the first ones in the ministry. When we first, we weren't even a ministry. We were, I was going to Pepperdine University. And, uh, you know, I just, you know me, I was naturally talking about the word to different people. And we started getting people, you know, at the school and they would start coming around, they follow us around and we, we finally said we we're going to get a uh, Bible study. But a lot of kids, they didn't uh, finish their classes until 10 o'clock at night. So we started our classes at about 10.15, I mean our Bible study at about 10.15. <clears throat> I said, but Lord, a lot of people aren't going to want to come because that's so late. He said, that will test the ones who are called here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Linda was one of the first ones. And so I assume that's why the Lord called her, but he gave her a vision. And she came to the front of the throne and all the churches, various churches were getting called up and they were getting their various rewards and some that, you know, weren't getting much reward. And, but whatever their calling was. Anyway, he, he called Rejoice and she said she turned around and she looked back and as far as the eye could see, there were members of Rejoice. And so she said, wow, I don't even know these half these most these people. And of course the Lord, and I believe it was the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit does make cracks sometimes. He's got a sense of humor. And anyway, he just like, she said, I don't even know they have these people. And he, it's a lot, a lot of things you don't know. <laughs> But he said, these are your brothers and sisters and rejoice. So I don't know how that's going to take place. But we have people in uh, different places that are leading people to the Lord. There are a lot of people seeing us on TV in a lot of different countries. I've gotten several calls from India and they wanted me to come out there and minister. I say, well, the Lord's going to have to directly tell me that. <laughs> anyway, um, the thing that tripped me out, though, is how do they, they see us? We don't even have a station out, out there. And then what's even more, more weird is that we've got a call from different places in Africa 
And in one, one place, all, all the uh, Christians got together. And because they had to fight against the witch doctors and all that, and the various things that go on, they all was behind each other and supporting each other. Except for one church, I'm not going to say who it was. <clears throat> but all of them, even the Catholics, they all, they all banded together. And so uh, they would get together at certain nights and then they would listen to the word. And somehow they got some of our tapes. And they were listening to the tapes. And they were like, ooh, we like this. And so they called and wanted to know, could they get some more of our tapes? Which, of course, we told them. Uh, <clears throat> the point I'm bringing up is, God is reaching people we don't even know he's reaching. And we just need to start being praising God about it. Because there is, there's a work he's doing with us quietly. And there's something yet he, he's called, he said we're going to do. He never tells me what it is, but he says just before the rapture, you're going to come into the glory. <clears throat> now glory, as I've said before, can be two things. It can be you go through some hard times, but you stand, and that standing is, is called glory. And then there's the glory everybody would think of, the joyous kind of thing. <clears throat> he didn't say which one it was, but whichever it is, we're going to stand and have victory in it. Amen. Praise yeah. <laughs> God. So <clears throat> we just need to start preparing ourselves because he's coming quietly like a thief in the night. And he's going to show up the, the king, the righteous one, the holy one, is going to show up bodily form. And he's going to take us and the angel is going to give a shout. And we're going to zoom up. Praising God as we go up. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, look at uh, Romans 12. Okay, look at verse 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's not even something that's hard and is rare. This is just your reasonable service. That you're to be holy and blameless and ready to serve him. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <laughs> say, say it again. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. That's our natural flesh tendency. But don't be conformed to the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. You guys ought to be hearing the word that you're hearing. And it's supposed to be transforming your mind. And we're back to willing to serve the Lord and we're seeking to be pleasing to him that's what he's called that's a form of worship that's what the worship he really wants us to walk in good that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God 
Amen. <clears throat> Turn to uh, Psalms 107. Go ahead. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And we sh his mercy endures forever. Okay. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you redeemed? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That's everywhere. And there are a lot of... Uh, Islamics that have been hearing saying that Jesus has been appearing in their midst in the Middle East. And they still, a lot of them calling him uh, a great prophet. But he's been appearing to some of them and letting them know that he's, he's the Lord. Not Allah, not anybody else, him. And many of them are starting to get saved. And so the Lord, <laughs> isn't that good? That shows how good he is. And <clears throat> there's another scripture in there that said, Oh, the men would praise the Lord. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Now, <clears throat> I think I told you guys this before, but I asked him, I said, what is it you want me to tell them so they, that they need to be ready in preparing themselves? And he said, tell them they're to praise me much that stay any level of sin out of their life. Because sin is like poison. He said, it will kill you. And he said, we're to walk in holiness and righteousness and feed on his word constantly, every day. Some measure of it, at least. Because that's like if you don't eat today, you start getting weak. And the word is spiritual food. So he wants us to feed the spiritual food into us every day. Don't just have a snack, have a meal. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do, you'll start seeing, feeling the effects of it. There are a lot of Christians who are just really being, mal they're malnourished. They're saved, they're born again, but there, there is no nourishment in them. And it's because they're not feeding the, the word in them. The word is living life. And when it goes in you, it feeds you and it nourishes you up. And when you start having trouble accomplishing things, you need to go eat another meal <laughs> and get yourself ready and praise him because he's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, look at John, the 15th chapter, 13th verse. Okay, go ahead. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Hmm. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father 
I have made known unto you. Is that good? <laughs> so he wants us to be constantly feeding. And it's a form of, really it's a form of worship. When you are just laying down your life and serving him, you're, you are worshiping him. And you're saying, this is, this is more important than anything else. And it's an honor for me to be able to worship the mighty, living, almighty God. <laughs> and he says, when you do that, you're not just his children, you're his friend as well. Is that good? Amen. Turn to Romans 5. Look at verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW14272, that is tape offer number TITW one four two seven hi you know the bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word that means when you put the word in your heart it will produce life and health to all your flesh it will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in the Word. Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047 or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.